Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Kawi, the host of BizGrams and the founder of Empowered Flex. I'm super excited today because we have two dynamic female entrepreneurs who are in the STEM. They're scientists turned entrepreneurs. I love it. And so today we're, we are graced with Stephanie and Christina, the founders of Arbor. And how are you ladies doing this morning? Great. Thank Very you. well. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Let's start with you, Stephanie. Um, how or who or what inspired you to start this entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a scientist by training. I recently graduated from the University of Toronto uh, with my master's. I never really saw myself as an entrepreneur. Um, the idea for our business kind of came serendipitously. I've known Christina for years since undergrad. Um, and then we just decided to take it on and it just felt like the right thing to do at the time. Like the idea was there, the business partner was perfect. So um, yeah, it kind of just happened for me really, I think. Hey, that's awesome. And Christina, how about yourself? Yeah, I have a similar story to Steph. Um, I've, I uh, did my undergrad in neuroscience and I'm currently doing my master's in psychology. So um, entrepreneurship has been something that's in the perf peripheries of you know science and and stem um and then when we went on this trip and stuff had this crazy scalp sunburn and we couldn't find any product that fit like that 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 need to protect your scalp outside of wearing a hat um it just felt like the right moment and also the right person to start a business with Hey, that is super exciting. And just wanting to dive in a little bit about in, you know, the STEM background. Um, we oftentimes engage with a lot of young women, girls, and, you know, we don't see them going into STEM as such. What advice or, you know, message do you have for young girls in particular as they're considering future careers as it relates to STEM? Christina, let's start with you. Yeah, I think for me, it's all about finding what you're interested in and what you're passionate about um, and pursuing that. Like for, for me, I've always been interested in how the brain works, how the mind works and behavior. Um, and I feel like from I was in high school, I just had this like one track fo focus to get into science. Um, and I would, and through that, that pushed me to ask for help from, you know, my teachers, ask my parents questions, um, and sort of get involved in things that would help me get to the, the position I am now. Um, so my advice is just, you know, find it and push yourself to get there. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Stephanie, how about yourself? Yeah, I think I have a unique experience that I've been very lucky to have a lot of female mentors um, along the way. Um, I've done a number of research projects in my undergrad and my master's and all of my supervisors were actually women. So I think that there are a number of very male dominated uh, areas in STEM, but I think that it's also changing. There are a lot of women starting to get into it and it's really mm -hmm. um, inspiring to see that. So I would just encourage all girls out there who, who are interested to join um, and help to be part of that change really. I know one of the things that you're passionate about is talking about education-based communities and with a primary focus on social media presence to provide consumers with evidence-based information about sun care, sun protection, mm -hmm. safety, health, all of these things. So what would you like to share with our viewers today um, about you know, evidence-based information as it relates to sun care? I know one of the things that I you know, had in my mind as a black person, I don't need sunscreen because, you know, I just, I'm good, but I've soon learned that is a, a myth. Everybody needs sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. Um, I think through starting this uh, company, Steph and I found that a lot of people don't realize that they need sunscreen because of, you know, like where they may live. If you like, if you live in Canada, um, a lot of times we grow up thinking we don't need sunscreen in the winter or, um, you know, if you have darker skin or you don't get sunburns um, very often. Um, that was my experience. I, I hardly get sunburns. I didn't really grow up wearing sunscreen. 
Um, but sunscreen is really important to uh, in preventing skin cancers. And skin cancers are one of the most common cancers in Canada, um, but they're also the most curable cancer um, mm -hmm. and preventable by wearing sunscreen, doing your regular skin checks, um, you know, consulting your physician if you know, you see something that concerns you. And um, I think in terms of our education-based community, we really want to um, take this information and uh, disseminate it in a way that's fun and easy to understand um, to every and anyone. So tell us, in, on your entrepreneurial journey, what would you say have been some of the challenges that you've experienced and the learnings, um, you know, that the lessons that you've learned along the way or currently learning? Stephanie, let's start with you. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge when Christine and I started, like, because we came from a STEM background, we didn't have like a traditional business background. We knew of the different elements that we needed to start a business, but we didn't know how to piece them together. Definitely in our early ideation phase brainstorming, it was like all these different pieces, like we knew we need to do marketing and product development and like manufacturing, like where does that fit it? Like every, we thought of everything, but we just didn't know how to pull it together and uh, plug for Leap Startup League. It was great experience <laughs> for us because it gave us such structured programming, literally like how to do everything step by step to, you know, set you up for success. So I think like in the beginning, that was a huge challenge and um, it definitely seemed like it was going to be really hard for us, but um, I found that like with those types of resources, like at an incubator or, you know, having different mentors going to different talks and sessions and workshops, like helped a lot to, you know, break it down for everybody to understand like how you can set up and run a business and, you know, make it a reality. Hey, that is awesome. How about yourself, Christina? Anything, you know, along the journey for you? you know, currently. So you all, you know, went through that business training program. What would you say are some of the current challenges and the lessons that you're learning through at the moment? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, one of them has been, you know, working remotely and, um, and being separated from each mm -hmm. other. Because when we started this business, um, Steph and I were both in Toronto, we were able to meet in person, test things out in our kitchens. Um, and now we're having to sort of learn how to use a whole host of like online tools, um, which has been fun and really exciting. Um, and we're able to sort of, um, you know, learn how to do new things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another challenge um, I think has been uh, like recently has been um, figuring out how to sort of implement our plan in terms of like, you know, learning how to go, go about looking for a manufacturer and going through those like specific details of, you know, starting a business um, for the first time and creating our own like physical product. Um, but even though it is a little bit challenging, we're, we're learning every step of the way and we have a great support system. Mm -hmm. So what tip or advice do you have for people on their entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, I can start. Um, I would just say to just get started. I know that like when I was explaining uh, when we were, you know, starting with an idea, it sounded so big and like there were just so many challenges and roadblocks in the way, but really if you don't get started, you're never going to do it. So I would just say to take that first step. I think that the pandemic though, it was you know devastating and it's not a good thing for the world, but it did open a lot of doors for entrepreneurs like us, um, especially if you're still a student, there's a lot of resources for students or you know, even if you're out of school too, there's a lot of free resources, everything's online now. So there's not really as many barriers, like especially ge geographically, we've taken part mm -hmm. in different workshops, incubators, or pitch competitions like globally now. So really like there's no excuse to not look for resources and get started. I think like if you're thinking of something like you just need to jump yeah. in and take that first step. Hey, that is awesome. How about yourself, Christina? What advice do you have for folks? Um, yeah, I think I agree with everything Steph said. Um, I think I just add on to that, like finding your community um, and your support network. Um, I think, you know, for us, we have each other to support um, each other when we're feeling a little bit low or stressed with either our company 
or our other other aspects of our life. Um, and that's really great, but it's also um, amazing to have, um, to be a part of a community like the Leap Startup League um, that we joined last summer or, and other incubators that we've been a part of um, and be able to ask questions um, and, and get help share experiences with other people and just, you know, support each other. I just want to say this has been an awesome experience myself. Um, great reconnecting with both of you ladies. Um, from our team here at Empowered Facts to your team over there at We Are Arbor or Arbor, um, we definitely want to send you out with lots of blessings and positivity for today and beyond. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you.